Hi guys, here we're here, and in today's build, I'm going to be showing you a very familiar one for those who most likely used it when Void 3.0 was first introduced. The build we have focuses on allowing users to have a constant overshield available, and enhance Void weapons, and ability usage across the board, so everything about it will allow you to be endgame ready. But as more and more stronger builds have started to show up, this build has started to become less common in the field for those who prefer damage over defense. But what if you could have both in one? That's where today's build is, as we'll be adding in the Pops of Brace and Pressure Scars to the mix to give you a really laid back endgame build. If you don't know, our beam is going to be buffed next season to give you a 50% overshield instead of a standard 25%. And then when you add on Pressure Scars healing, more overshields via barricades, ability to break all types of elemental shields, and suppress enemies as much as you like, you get a build that can carry you very, very far in the end game with little effort. But before we start, like always, if you enjoy the content then do leave a like, a sub and a share and turn on your notifications for more content like this as it really does help me out. Let's start with the subclass being used which will be of course Void. We will be using everything within our arsenal to achieve our goal and the good thing about Titan Void fragments and aspects is that it doesn't require a lot to make what we need to work. Now this is both a good and bad thing as it reduces time taken to build up what we need but also reduces the amount of customization at our disposal. We will be using Bastion as part of our aspect which provides an overshield to us and allies via barricades. We then have Offensive Bulwark where upon having an active shield, your grenades recharge faster, you have increased melee range and damage and melee final blows extend overshield duration. Now for fragments, we have Echo of Instability, where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds to void weapons. Echo of Explosion, where void ability final blows cause targets to explode, and Echo of Undermining, where your void grenades weaken targets. Key stats are 80 Resilience, 90 Discipline and 16 Intellect, although this can be reduced down to 50 if you use Font Wisdom mod. For key mod, we have Reaping Wildmaker mod, where upon using a class ability and getting a kill, you will produce an elemental well. Elemental Ordnance, where using your grenades will produce elemental wells upon kills. Battleful Well, which will increase all well producing mods to plus 2. Fond of Wisdom, where you get a plus 50% intellect boost to your intellect stat upon getting a well. And a Seeking Worlds, where elemental wells will attract to you. Many of you will most likely be familiar with the setup shown for Titans, as this is one of the best fragments and aspects set up if you want to lean heavily into Void 3.0. It has everything you would want in terms of damage and survival, and from here you can expand on it further with any void weapon and exotic of your choosing. In our case, we will be adding on precious scars so we can expand on the many heals we get and also produce a team overshield upon reviving others with it. It's fantastic for those who wish to solo content or head into master to grandmaster content with the best tools available to survive, and honestly, it does show. Now weapons do need to be void so that echo and stability can work as magic. However, this only applies to your primary weapon, your heavy and your secondary can be whatever you like. You will also need to have a weapon with a pulse of brace perk as that will make having infinite overshield a breeze, but at the same time it's not also required as you can do without. Now if you do go the RB route, then the best weapon for that would be Doom or Chelchius from the raid with adapted munition and repulsive brace. This weapon right here is very easy to farm and get and is one of the best raid weapons to date for what it offers to users. This roll I have here is great for endgame as adaptive munition will allow me to deal with all shields at once and not need to rely on a certain elemental weapon to break enemy shields faster. You then have RB which, once procced, will give you a 25% overshield there and then. However, this will be changed quite soon to give us a 50% instead and with how the build is designed, you too can become a Colossus in the making. And then of course you have this origin trait, which will give you more ammo if you've load while in a team and etc. Basically, this is the number one weapon you want to aim for for any void building game, and it's simple to use but very effective with its stats and perks. Now this is best for end game because of the specific role I aimed for, but you can go a bit crazy elsewhere if you don't like to take things slow. Hero's Burden from Iron Banner and Unforgiven from the Dungeon can both drop Repulsive Brace as a perk and both are fast flying weapons with some great strength. 
Once you apply certain perks and fragments to them, your weapons become a monster in the right hands, and honestly I recommend you farm them out before next season comes. For Heavy, we have the Corrective Measure with Demolitionist and Firefly, which is a great combo for getting back grenades quickly via its AoE effect. As is Void, it's going to benefit from the fragments used, and can also be terrifying to use against all types of enemies you face. In fact, if you place a scavenger mod on, you could use this weapon as a primary heavy, considering how large this magazine size is, and how effective it is at tearing things down. Of course, do take in mind that there are many, many heavy weapons to choose, and you don't need to use a void heavy like shown to complete the build. For stats, you want a strong focus on your resilience stat, since this will be producing barricades and allow you to get an overshield faster. Ideally, a good spot to aim for would be a max 100, as you want this available there and then, but in some cases, this won't always be available for more newer players. So, if you are a newer player, instead, aim for 70 to 80, or even 60 to 80, if you're still new to the game, and don't have the best armor just yet, as you'll still get your abilities back relatively fast. On top of that, you can add on the Absolution mod for further ability cooldown, and then add on the Distribution mod as well, since you will be activating your class ability a lot. Getting a max stat or near max stat would allow you to avoid any unneeded mods of your choosing, and be more flexible. But only, and I mean only, if you have the tools available to do so. You then want to invest into Discipline and also go for a high stat as well, as we will be using Special Grenades to trigger RB as much as we can, Although we do have the ability to use volatile rounds to activate the given perk, suppression grenades are also viable for shutting down everything we face while still maintaining the build. I would recommend you get an 80 to 100 range for this, as you will be using your grenades as much as you can, and you will be using them as quick source of elemental wells. I also highly recommend you play around with them first before you adventure with them, as they are hard to use and master most environments. You can of course use something else, but this would be strongly recommended to do first if you want what's best. Let's over mods, we have Void Cypher mod, where getting a kill with Void Weapons will allow you to produce an orb of power, Innovation for reducing grenade cooldown upon getting an orb of power, Machine Gun Scavenger for more ammo and reserves, and Sundown Glare where hitting targets at distance will give you a debuff towards them. Now, with everything covered, here are the mods compiled into one to make it easier to take notes. For Head, we have Discipline, Void Siphon and Reaping Wellmaker mod. Arm, we have Discipline and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Filmish of Plating, Concussive Dampener and Bountiful Well mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Machine Gun Scavenger, Invigoration and Thunder Wisdom mod. Mark, with Maya Discipline, Summoning Glare and Seeking Wells mod. Quite a popular build when Void 3.0 was first released, as overshields before were limited in their uses and activation. Now, what I mean by this is that a lot of endgame content relied on Warlock's Wells to provide damage, heals, and overshields all in one, while Titans were more looked at for their Thundercrash max damage supers. Although Bubble was viable to use, Bubble back then was, I'll be honest with you, quite weak compared to the version we have now, and if you use anything in GM based, then a group of enemies could easily pop it and destroy your buff there and then. This of course left you with Banner Shield, which is good for damage and protection, but you never got the Overshield effect as well, and then eventually it got nerfed as well. So this brings us to today's build, which is the counter of all bad things Titans used to suffer with. We can now just as easily use Bubbles or Banner Shields without threat, but also be able to produce Overshields however we like. The aspects used allows us to heavily rely on Overshields as long as we have a strong resilient stat, and from there we could place a barricade down, which will always give us a recovering shield with little to no downtime. But that's not all, as using pressure scars effects means that we can regain health on top of our shields from kills made, and then you have repulsive brace which will be getting a buff quite soon, and that will offer us an extra 50% overshield upon those affected by void debuffs. Because of how the offensive ball aspects worked with overshields, and how things like suppression grenades and volatile rounds work, you can get a clear picture as to why this would become a reigning champ for endgame across the board. Truthfully, even without the RB buff, the following build would still be amazing in today's environment because of the strength of aspects and fragments combined. It won't make you godly and unstoppable in content, but it will make doing tougher content a lot more easier and safer for you to use, even though content at the moment is pretty easy to do. 
So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and a share. And also follow me on Twitter to keep you up to date with new Destiny changes and such. Once again, thank you for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.